Hello, my name is Nicolas Lavoie. I am a medical student at McGill University. Now, I will be bringing you through a high yield review of the hormonal treatment mechanism for breast cancer and their side effects using the Surgery Basics in 4D interactive app content. We will start by defining important landmarks. The breast is divided into four quadrants. The upper outer quadrant is the most common area for breast cancer development. Breast tissue that extends into the anterior axillary fold is called the axillary tail of spans. You can see. It is important to palpate patient in this region on physical examination because as a reminder, 75% of the breast lymphatic drainage goes to the axillary lymph nodes. Let's move along and discuss the main components of the breast tissue. The mammary gland is the female organ that produces milk and is made up of lactiferous sinuses which branch out into ducts and subsequently into lobules. It is a site for invasive cancer. Now let's quickly review the main categories of breast cancer that are relevant for our anti-hormonal treatment discussion. First, we have the atypical ductal hyperplasia, which represents an overproliferation of epithelial cells in the mammary ducts. It is analogous to atypical lobular hyperplasia of the mammary lobules. Both of these hyperplasia of the breast tissue increases the risk of cancer by fourfold compared to the general population. Secondly, we have DCIS, which stands for ductal carcinoma in situ. Since it is still in situ, it has not invaded the basement membrane yet. Remember that the DCIS is considered a premalignant lesion, while atypical hyperplasia and lobular carcinoma not in situ, not shown on this slide, are not considered premalignant lesion, but rather markers for high risk of developing breast cancer. Importantly, we then have our two main types of invasive cancer. We have the invasive ductal carcinoma, IDC, which represents 80% of all cases of breast cancer. It grows in a more organized manner when compared to invasive lobular carcinoma. Therefore, it presents as a mass in mammograms or as a palpable lump and deuce is easier to diagnose. Finally, we have the invasive lobular carcinoma, not shown on the screen, which represent 15% of breast cancers and grow in a more infiltrative manner than IDC and is not associated with any calcification and therefore is more difficult to diagnose in, ma in screening mammograms. To properly understand anti-hormonal treatments, we must first introduce key markers. First, we have hormonal receptor markers, which include estrogen receptor and progesterone receptor. Estrogen receptor is an important diagnosis determinant since approximately 70 to 75% of invasive breast cancer carcinomas are characterized by significant enhancement of estrogen receptor expression. The presence of estrogen receptor and progesterone receptor is a good prognostic indicator because of the possibility of anti-hormonal treatment, which include the utilization of tamoxifen or aromatase inhibitors. Although not the topic of today's session, another important marker is the presence of the HER2 receptor. HER2 is a marker of aggressiveness. But with, a, with the current targeted therapies such as trastuzumab, it has a slightly better prognosis. Now that you're familiar with the relevant structures in the breast, the important breast cancer categories and the relevant markers for anti-hormonal treatments, let's discuss the anti-hormonal treatment itself. Tamoxifen is the most used medication for anti-hormonal treatment. Tamoxifen is a selective estrogen receptor modulator, SERM. In other words, it competes with estrogen receptors. Tamoxifen has a key role in decreasing the risk of subsequent invasive cancer in patients with a history of estrogen receptor positive breast cancer malignancy. Importantly, tamoxifen is not is, is recommended for pre and postmenopausal women, which is not the cases for all anti-hormonal treatment. Here we have summarized for you what are the main indications for anti-hormonal therapy. To start, currently primary prevention with tamoxifen if the woman is premenopausal or tamoxifen-reloxifen 
or an aromatase inhibitor if the woman is postmenopausal should be considered in the case of an atypical hyperplasia. In the case of DCIS, doc Dr. Carcinoma in situ, tamoxifen can be used for five years following lumpectomy and postoperative breast radiation. For lobular carcinoma in situ, tamoxifen can be used as chemo prevention following excisional biopsy. In the case of IDC and ILC, which are the two types of invasive cancer, after a suspicious finding on imaging, commonly mammograms, a biopsy is used to confirm the diagnosis of IDC or ILC, and hormonal markers can be assessed from the sample. You can add tamoxifen to the new adjuvant induction or adjuvant chemotherapy if the tumor is estrogen receptor positive. The standard treatment duration is 5 years. However, recent data reports a benefit if treatment continues for 10 years. Importantly, hormonal therapy can be used without chemotherapy if the tumor is estrogen receptor progesterone receptor positive, HER2 negative, lymph node negative, and if the, the tumor is of low risk on genetic testing. Finally, treatment of metastatic breast cancer is mainly systemic and therefore anti-hormonal therapy is an option. Let's now list and discuss the main side effects of tamoxifen. Importantly, tamoxifen has been associated with endometrial cancer. It has been hypothesized that tamoxifen may act as an antagonist in breast tissue while being a partial agonist in the endometrium tissue, which may explain this association. In addition, tamoxifen has been linked with deep vein thrombosis, pulmonary embolism, and mood swings. Finally, since estrogen plays a key role in bone remodeling regulation, an important side effect of tamoxifen is osteoporosis. Although not the main subject of today's lesson, trastuzumab is an HER2, an, uh, an HER2 antibody used along chemotherapy when HER2 receptor marker is positive. Cardiac toxicity is the main side effect of trastuzumab. Lastly, it is important to mention that 80% of breast cancer in men is estrogen progesterone receptor positive and that the management is similar to breast cancer in women, which include tamoxifen utilization. With that, that is the end of our high-yield anti-hormonal treatment and side effect review. Thank you for your attention.